Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online VGC 20 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. In the last Road to Rank, we featured a really cool team revolving around Gigantamax Kingler, built by Francesco Pardini, so we'll be playing a little bit more with it. And if you actually want to see this team used by Francesco Pardini himself, check out the best of three exhibition champion battles that we did against him. That's linked in the description below and should be up by the time this video goes up. So thank you guys as always for watching. Go check out Francesco. Hope you guys have been enjoying this team. And of course, it is a rental team, so feel free to try it out yourself. Before we get started with today's episode though, this video is sponsored by The Ridge. I told you guys I wouldn't accept the sponsorship on this channel unless it was for a company or product that I really believed in, and I'm happy to say that The Ridge is our first official sponsor on this channel. The Ridge makes all kinds of cool products ranging from phone cases to backpacks, but their most popular product is actually the Ridge Wallet, which you can see right here. The Ridge Wallet conveniently stores up to 12 cards between these two metallic plates and also has a strap to keep everything binded together. There's also a strap or a clip for cash here in the back, and it is a super minimalistic take on the modern day wallet. It's really easy to use as well. You simply fan out your cards here, pull out whatever you need as such, and put it back in. Since getting the Ridge Wallet, I've actually moved away from my old bulky wallet, which just took up a lot of space, and I can't go anywhere without this product now. If you don't believe me though, there's over 30,000 five-star reviews for this product, and there's also free shipping, free returns, and a lifetime warranty on the wallets. The wallets also come in all kinds of different materials and colors. This is the carbon fiber one, which feels amazing, and I love carrying it around, but it comes in titanium, as you can see, all kinds of different colors, as well as aluminum. So, the Ridge Wallet, honestly, one of the best products I never knew I needed, but now I can't go anywhere without it. They also make a line of phone cases, which are super, super nice. This is the leather phone case for the iPhone 8. And some of my other favorite products from the Ridge is actually the line of backpacks that they have. I have a weatherproof backpack, as you can see right here, as well as a weatherproof duffel bag. I actually own all these bags and I've been using them very consistently, so take it from me guys, I actually genuinely really love The Ridge and all of their products, and if you have any questions about them, you can feel free to reach out to me as well. You can also get a 10% discount if you use the code VGC and go to the website ridge.com slash VGC. So yeah, get 10% off your next order, let me know how things are, and I hope you guys try out The Ridge because they really make some awesome products. Thanks again to The Ridge for sponsoring this channel, and thanks to you guys for allowing me to have the sponsorship. Alright, we're just going to look for our first opponent of the day. Guys, thank you so much for giving me the flexibility to have sponsorships on this channel. And uh, yeah, really excited to just play some more games with this team. As always, if you guys enjoy Road to Rank, please share your support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. And I really hope we can bring Kingler more today. Uh, first game we're up against for the day is a team that actually was able to get top 8 over at Oceania International Championships. Um, it got top 8 with two different players, but this one now has it in Cinemar, whereas obviously Incineroar wasn't allowed back then, but everything else is the same with Gengar, Togekiss, Bisharp, Rotom, and Kunkelder. So, the first question I always have to ask is, is this a Kingler game? It could be, but the thing that Kingler has to watch out for is decreasing Bisharp's speed, which would give it a Defiant boost, but I actually still like it. So, you know what? This is a Kingler team. We're bringing Kingler. Um, now the scary thing about the opposing team is I think it is like Life Orb, Nasty Plot, Rotom. Uh, Dynamax Rotom actually gives us a lot of trouble in this team, I think, now that I think about it. Hmm. It does give us a lot of trouble. So, in order to KO it, we'd have to knock out the redirection support, which is Togekiss. Not Once we knock out Togekiss, then we'll have a better time with... Rotom. So we need our Rotom in the back. Um, I don't like Incineroar this matchup. The only thing Intimidate really helps out against is Conkelder. So I think we drop that. So maybe Kingler and Tyranitar? With Excadrill and Rotom in the back. I don't know how I feel about this 100%, but I don't like leading Excadrill. And I think we, we definitely need the Rotom in this game, because I think our opponent tries to win by bringing Rotom Wash. Um, yeah. Definitely a scary team, I think. There's a reason why players were able to perform super well with this team uh, over in Australia just a couple of weeks ago. And there is a lot of heavy offense. Bisharp is a really cool Pokemon that actually Dynamaxed a lot on stream uh, when this team was used. And there's the Bisharp and Rotom immediately, okay. Uh, this is not ideal for Kingler, I would say. This is actually really bad, but I don't know how I beat Rotom Bisharp with this team, actually. Other than leading Tyranitar Excadrill, and even that's kind of weak. Yeah. Mm, we might want to conserve the Dynamax here. We could Dynamax Tyranitar. I also don't know how fast he is relative to my Kingler. It could be slower, but probably wouldn't be. Um, you can't knock. Uh, you could knock out both Pokemon if you have a Fighting type attack on Bisharp, I guess. 
Unfortunately, I don't think this is a position for Kingler to Dynamax. I think we probably Dynamax Tyranitar, actually, more than anything. Um, yeah, I want to Rock Slide here. That, actually, no. Let's just Super Power into Bisharp. And... I actually like Max Knuckling Rotom here, just to get the attack boost. Yeah, I think Rotom Dynamaxes. I think Kingler probably goes down, and then you give me a free switch and into the... Excadrill. Yep, so there's Rotom Dynamax. Like I said, I thought Rotom was the biggest threat. Uh, maybe Rockfall is better because there is a chance my opponent activates the weakness policy onto Tyranitar. It's actually a very solid chance because what else do you really hit it with, right? You're not going to go for dark type attacks, so otherwise it would be just Max Lightning. Uh, so I don't like my play here too much. I would have preferred to go for the Max Rockfall. The attack boost doesn't really help out too much when we're slower than anything anyway, and slightly Tyranitar can get KO'd next turn after taking damage this turn. But I think we needed to Dynamax Tyranitar. Unfortunately, yeah. Kingler could have been put in a lot of work against most of the leads my opponent brought, but Rotom Bisharp is like the worst lead for Kingler. So, got to adapt a little bit. Yeah, there's Max Geyser. He's actually going to activate my weakness policy. So, like I said, I should have Max Rockfall. Okay. Um. Yeah. And we will be at plus three attack and plus one attack with Kingler, though. Maybe it's just a low kick as well, coming off from Bisharp. I don't even know if that KOs, though. Or an Iron Head, yeah. Yeah, that does not KO after the Dynamax. And he's Life Orb, so we'll actually just knock out Bisharp. Um, this is actually not bad then, I guess. We knock out Bisharp, and we get a lot of damage onto the Rotom. Not a lot, I guess. Like, Max Rockfall, there should still be better. But um, all things considered, yeah, not bad. I didn't know the item on the Bisharp there. I didn't remember it either, so yeah. Uh, we'll get the Max Knuckle here. Well, Rockfall definitely would have KO'd. We should have just Max Rockfall. Like, we Max Rockfall there, I think we literally just win the game turn one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know why I got greedy with that Max Knuckle. I was thinking maybe my opponent targets the Kingler, thinking that's going to Dynamax. Uh, Kinkelder coming in is the problem, though, obviously. I mean, you probably, what, Max Electric into Kingler? And Mach Punch Tyranitar? So I'd like to burn another turn of Dynamax here, if possible. So I want to switch out into Excadrill. Does Mach Punch KO Tyranitar? I'm not sure it does. Mm, I don't know if I really need Tyranitar anyway. So yeah, I'm going to just... I guess I would lose my Dynamax advantage here, though. I really wish I Max Rockfall. We literally could have just won the game turn one if I did, but I did not. That Max Knuckle was silly. Alright, Mach Punch just get the KO. Let's see if it's Max Lightning here into the X control slot. This gives us a free switch into Rotom, though. Like I was saying. Yeah, okay. Well, it's not terrible, then. This next turn is kind of a read, though. Is it a read? I mean, I could easily double protect. Uh, the basic question is here, does Rotom go for... I believe that team had Ally Switch, actually. Um, and then does Conkelder, like, Ice Punch if it has a KO Rotom? Because I could double up onto Kinkelder. Um, Double protecting is the safest play, but I would lose my Sash. I think I'm just going to Iron Head and Leaf Storm here. Yeah. I mean, this is a pretty obvious Leaf Storm. So, the obvious play for my opponent is just to Max Guard the Rotom and attack with Kinkelder. But I'm thinking maybe my opponent fears to double up onto the Kinkelder for that reason. It's not Flame Orb though, so it's probably Assault Vest. So I think Conkelder is actually a really tough Pokemon to match up against. Okay, no Max Guard from Rotom. Perfect. Uh, there's also a flinch chance from Iron Head. Leaf Storm connects too, which is perfect. And KOs Rotom. Good. Okay, so we knocked out the biggest threat, but like I said, I, I really didn't like my Rotom Wash matchup to begin with on this team. The upside is that Rain is up, so that regular Kingler's liquidations can actually do a fair amount of damage, which is kind of cool. Mm, probably Drain Punch onto the X could draw fights, I guess. Yep. Okay. So obviously gonna heal back a ton. Uh, maybe the play there is to actually protect the Excadrill then, because taking all that damage is not good. It's definitely not good. Especially because that's a AV Conkelder, I'm sure. Um, a double up from Road. Okay, it's Togekiss. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, the question is, do I swap out Rotom? I think I, sh I need to. Yeah. Iron Head, the Togekiss, swap out Rotom into Kingler. You have to Mach Punch us, and then Togekiss shouldn't do too much damage. It's going to be close. It's going to be Kingler, Rotom against 
Um, Tyranitar can kill there. Let's see. Yep, there's Mach Punch. I don't mind. Like, I, there's no need to protect the Excadrill there. Just worried about Yawn right now from Token Kiss. He's just Dazzling Gleaming. We're Assault Vest. This is single target. Uh, that does a lot. Okay. Rain is still up, though, so Liquidation is going to hit like a truck. I want to double up on a Conkelder, because, like, I want to just Thunderbolt, and... Because I don't think that... That looks like a Selvis, right? Yeah, so Thunderbolt Liquidation, that. Oh, he might... Uh, okay, actually, that might not be the best play, because then you can just Mock Punch and Dazzling Gleam the Kingler, and that might just KO us. I think you probably do go for that play, to be honest. Do we have a way around that? Does Life Orb Thunderbolt knock out Togekiss? It might... Yeah. Oh, he does a mock punch though. Or follow me. I think this chaos can kill there, right? Oh, I hope it does. Alright, Dazzling Gleam. Okay. Kingler. Liquidation. Doesn't knock out Kunkelder in the rain. I don't know this calc at all. That was a crit. I don't I wanna say that it didn't matter, but it totally could have. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna do that calc after this game, actually. Uh we still haven't won though, actually, by any means. Yeah. Because Gleam might just KO us now. Um, I don't know if Life Orb Thunderbolt KOs. Is there a reason to protect? I mean, if we protect and Kingler faints, we lose anyway. So might as well just Thunderbolt. And Liquidation, yeah. I don't know if Life Orb Thunderbolt knocks out Togekiss. Let's see. Here we go. Life Orb Thunderbolt. Ah, fall short by like 5%. Oh no. That's game. Well played. That was a really good game. Yeah, we get outsped here. So that would have been the reason to actually protect the Rotom, um, the threat of weakness policy. I thought another Dazzling Gleam was knocking out Kingler anyway, though, so came down to whether we could get the KO with Thunderbolt. I didn't know the calc there super well. Um, could have also gone for a Dark Pulse flinch instead. If we flinch, we win. Um, because that does the chip damage, but yeah, I don't know the calc there entirely. I think I could have played a little bit better, but I honestly do think this matchup was really rough. Um, I don't think Incineroar offers anything more, so we have to bring in the Rotom. Um, the Conkelder is just a really big threat to Tyranitar Excadrill. Uh, maybe our own Togekiss could have provided some value, but the thing is, Togekiss obviously is not that great against the Dynamax Rotom Wash. So I think mm, maybe the one play I would have done differently was protecting Excadrill to turn I Leaf Storm into Rotom. But like I said, Rotom could have max guarded there and Conkelder could have targeted our Rotom down. So yeah, really, really close game, but a really fun one. And uh, I guess I should have played around weakness policy because my opponent wasn't critting at that point. And if it's not weak, I mean, if it's not crit, then it's Babiri or um, weakness policy, right? Yeah. So I don't remember what the item on the original version of that team was uh, over in Australia, but that was cool. This is quite the team. Uh, Clef, Darmanitan, Venusaur, Mimikyu, Charizard, and Torkoal. Uh, is this a Kingler game? It could be. I mean, there is the threat of Trick Room, but everything else is really speedy. I think I'm going to bring it again. That last game was just terrible for Kingler, but I think this one could be better. Um, I think Incineroar is really good here because of Snarl and Flare Blitz pressure. I don't think we bring Rotom. We probably don't bring Togekiss, so I think we just go Incineroar Kingler with Tyranitar Exeter on the back. I am kind of forcing Kingler pretty hard with this team, so, I, I mean, in, in VGC, obviously, you shouldn't be set on just bringing a Pokemon every time, but, you know, part of the reason we're using this team is to see how Kingler operates, and I think losing with it also highlights where some of its weaknesses are, and that last game, the main weakness was that it was just putting on so much pressure. Also, I mean, that last game, if I just max Rockfall turn one, like, that might just knock out Rotom, honestly. <laughs> Uh, and even if it doesn't, it does so much more damage, uh, and the sand is reset, so that Tyranitar isn't in, uh, I mean, you don't pressure with Max Geyser as much, um, but that was really close. The play might have been also to have, mm, no, I was gonna say double up on a Togekiss, but that's not the correct play, because Kinkelder is always targeting. I also think, for my opponent, you should just mock Punch Dazzling Gleam, which I think should just KO the Kingler there, so I think if you mock Punch Dazzling Gleam, I don't really have a way around that, since Thunderbolt isn't knocking out the Togekiss. That might have been a damage roll there, I'm not sure, but I guess if I'm EVing Togekiss, I wouldn't want enough investment to survive um max special attack life orb thunderbolt rotom because that is something that people are using more of all right fun game though and definitely a lost slot we can't feel that bad about just well played by my opponent and it was a like, tr tricky matchup as well plus i didn't play you know optimally in some terms as well so lots of things we could point to to improve in cleft charizard okay uh 
This is great, isn't it? I mean... I guess great is relative. You can max overgrowth here. In fact, I'm sure you max overgrowth. Follow me, max overgrowth is my bet. I don't really have a switch him, but maybe that's fine. Like, max overgrowth doesn't KO us, even if you're helping Hannah, right? So what's stopping us from just snarling and foam bursting? That seems fine by me. If you commit the G-Max or D uh, Dynamax to Charizard early on, then you're doing way less damage. Clef actually switches out. Okay. Oh, uh, does Life Orb Sun Boosted KO us? Even if it does, I... Mm, I was going to say it's not the end of the world because we've got Tyranitar X Control in the back, but it's not a good start. I, I feel like we should survive with Kingler with the Salt Vest, but I don't know my Kingler calcs very well, so... We're about to learn one way or another. And... Yeah, we didn't really have a way around this because the Clef should switch out after the Incineroar, so weather is always changing in my opponent's favor. But if this doesn't KO us, then I think we just win the game, honestly. <laughs> so let's see. Let's see if Solar Power, Life Orb, Charizard, In Sun is enough to knock out Kingler with the Salt Vest. Can the Crab handle the heat right now? I'm not in the mood for Steam Crab tonight. Let's see. Oh! That's even better! Oh, Max Overgrowth was 100% KOing. <laughs> okay. Nice. Uh, that's huge. Yeah. That was definitely KOing. Okay. I will take that. Uh, I will definitely take that. And that's not bad damage from Foam Burst either. Okay. Ooh, that was scary though. Yeah, I'm assuming my opponent just assumed they could get the knockout there immediately. We get the Snar off too. I wish I parting shotted here a little bit more. Uh, if we parting shot it, we get the free switch in. It's actually pretty good damage on the Torkoal, all things considered. Um, yeah. Solar power, shocking. <laughs> uh, we go out into Tyranitar now, and just go for a max foam burst. Uh, in sand, Torkoal can't do anything against Kingler. Okay, not bad. That turn one could have been very scary. I thought max overgrow was coming, and I thought maybe we could survive, but man, I think I just underestimated solar power, life orb, Charizard. Like that's just so much damage. Uh, Kingler should outspeed now. Like, it's at minus one speed. Torkoal switches out. Okay, good switch. Into Clef. Okay. That's still fine. Oh, he's faster! What? But that doesn't KO us now. Wow, I should know my Kingler's speed tier is a little bit better, I guess. Um... I feel like my opponent went for, like, the worst move with Charizard. I guess, no, sorry, the Max Airstream makes sense. I mean, unless you don't have Max Overgrowth, but it would be weird to not have Max Overgrowth, I feel like, with that team. Uh, either way, we get out of a pretty bad position. Like, I I don't think Kingler should have been really good in this match. I mean, it looked good on paper, and I think it would have been good if we brought Togekiss for support, but given what my opponent brought, we probably should have lost. I mean, like, the game's still not over, obviously, but uh, we got out of it a little bit better than expected, because Kingler totally should have fainted. <laughs> but... We get three turns of Dynamax with it. Hmm, interesting. Okay. That was a good switch out, though, by the Torkoal's end. Um, but the thing is, now you've got Clef and Torkoal and Venusaur as your last one. Okay, that's all good to see. Uh, Venusaur's the last one. I think I want to stay in with both here. Uh, no, I think we, we can't risk losing Tyranitar, so I think we swap out into Incineroar. And go for another foam burst. On to Clef. Once we knock out Clef, uh, Tyranitar X Control wins this game. But we need Sand Up, so this is a game of Weather Wars. It also might come down to whether my opponent hits some Sleep Powders or not with Venusaur, which is scary. Okay, let's see. Oh, Venusaur protects. That's actually a perfect turn for us then. Um, uh, because we get a free switch into Incineroar, and we get the Foam Burst off, which decreases the Venusaur speed, so now even in Sun, extra draw out speeds. Look how much damage Foam Burst did there, too. Not bad. And with Incineroar out, we don't have to worry about, um, G-Max Wildfire damage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Manual Sunny Day, Clef. Okay. I like that, man. I like that a lot. That's neat. So Kingler should go down here. But Kingler did more than I needed it to, honestly, this game. 
expected it to get cooked for dinner immediately, but somehow we managed to get three turns of damage off with it, which we definitely take. Um, so we can just go back out into Tyranitar now, yeah. Uh, the problem here is that you could still switch the Clef out into Torkoal. Yeah, but then, does it knock out Tyranitar? It might. Uh, I would prefer to Snarl Protect here, yeah. Because if you switch out to Torkoal, then that works out in our favor, where then we can Flare Blitz the Venusaur next turn. Um, right now, I think our Incineroar is in a pretty good spot. He actually stays in, okay, which makes me think it's going to be Follow Me. Or maybe Helping Hand? No? Okay, Follow Me, good. Yeah, so getting a Snarl off against Venusaur is a really big deal, because now it shouldn't KO us. Oh, we're faster with Incineroar. Okay. Oh, sorry. I'm not. I don't know why I'm surprised by that. The reason I, <laughs> what I was expecting was Venusaur to outspeed us because I expected the Torkoal to switch in, but it did not. Sleep Powders into Tyranitar. Okay, that's perfect. Sleep Powder into Incineroar could have been really scary there, actually. Um, but that puts us now in a really good spot, I think. Yeah. Uh, Tyranitar shouldn't faint from a Grass type attack now, so I think we just Flare Blitz into Venusaur. And Rock Slide. If you go for Follow Me, you're not knocking out Tyranitar, and then we should just win the game by switching out. Okay, yep, there's the cleft switch out. So Flare Blitz will knock out Venusaur, so the question is, uh, does Venusaur target down the... Uh, who are you? Are, are you Sleep Powdering here, basically? Sleep Powder is what I'm worried about right now. Yep. I disconnect, okay. Hmm. Well, the bright side is we do get a big rock slide off here. And with Venusaur being at minus one... Oh, I mean, that's so much damage. That's really good damage. Ah, uh, we crit Torkoal. Okay. Not bad. Um, as we take more wildfire damage. I mean, Incineroar is in a really solid spot right now. So I think I just click Flare Blitz. And protect. Hmm... I guess, I mean, what do you go for here with... Yeah, Easily Powders. Okay. Ah, and we wake up. That's game then. Cool. Uh, I just wanted to maximize my odds there, because Venusaur and Torkoal shouldn't be able to do very much damage to Incineroar there. So, y y by protecting, we just burn another turn of sleep, and yeah, then you're relying on maybe hitting a Sleep Powder, as my opponent was going for. So, yeah, that'll seal up the game. Obviously, we got that critical hit onto Torkoal, but I don't think it matters because another Rock Slide is KOing anyway. And Torkoal is not winning against Incineroar, Tyranitar. And we had the extra draw waiting in the back as well. But, I don't know, this was a weird game because I feel like I got out of it pretty lucky given that Max Overgrowth from Solar Power Life War probably knocks out our Crab, which would have been pretty bad. Um, so, I'm not really too content with how I played this because even though it was a relatively clean victory, it came down to my opponent making some plays that honestly were kind of weird. Um, so, I feel like if they had... Just max overgrowth turn one. Uh, this would have been a completely different game. But I think what my opponent was maybe not expecting was like, they were like, oh, I might as well just go for the speed boost. I don't need to just go for overkill onto the Kingler. What's Kingler even going to do? I could see that being like a line of thought because I've definitely been on that side before. So yeah, either way, we get a win there though. And we're going to look for our last opponent of the day. Um, yeah, Kingler's been good though, man. I mean, uh, that first game was still, I'm just frustrated myself for not max rock falling. I, like, the max knuckle made no sense. That was just kind of a silly play. The late game, I'm, like, relatively okay with how I played it, but turn one could have played out very differently if I just clicked Max Knuckle. Um, Concalder was also a really big threat. I feel like the Pokemon choices were fine that game, but it was a bad matchup, so I needed to play better than my opponent, and I did not. My opponent outplayed me. Wow, Shedinja. Dracovish. NDD Male. And then Wimscott Togekiss kissed Duraludon. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean... We've got Tyranitar, so we have to bring that, right? Unfortunately, Kingler might not be... <laughs> I always say Kingler might not be that great, but then I still want to bring it. Like, it's not that great, but it's not bad either. I mean, Foam Burst is honestly pretty solid. Can max Knuckle stuff, too. I think Tyranitar Exodrawer must. Incineroar is tempting, but... Uh, Fish does scare me a lot. I think Fish actually scares me enough that I bring Kingler, oddly enough. I could just lead Tyranitar Exodrawer, though. Um, like, I'm thinking Tyranitar Exodrill lead. Kingler Exodrill is actually more tempting, because that gives us more flexibility, I think, with Tyranitar and Rotom in the back. 
Um, I don't think you bring Shedinja into this matchup, and if you do, if my opponent brings it against this team, it means I'm going to get wrecked because it means they've got some strat I'm not expecting, and that's scary. Um, the question is, who is my last one if I'm bringing Kingler? Is it Rotom, Incineroar, or Togekiss? All are okay, but I'm leaning towards Rotom solely for Leaf Thunderbolt against Togekiss. Um, I'm actually going to bring Togekiss this time around. I haven't brought it enough. I think we have enough damage output against Togekiss anyway with Extra Draw, Tyranitar, and Kingler. So, yeah, I'm going to swap it up a little bit here. Uh, mainly because Togekiss has Follow Me, which can be really important against the Dracovish and a Hell's Helping Hand. I think Helping Hand support, support Excadrill and Dracovish really... Sorry, Excadrill and... Um, what was I going to say? Uh, Excadrill and Kingler a lot. Shiny Duraldon looks cool. It's like the same, but kind of like a tinted metal. Okay. Um, I mean, we probably should Dynamax the... Do I Dynamax Kingler? I want to, so badly. It's actually tempting, as crazy as it seems. It's as crazy as it seems, it's tempting. It's just that Extra Drill's not- it's, like, Extra Drill's just such a good candidate to Dynamax here. Yeah, I think we, we just Dynamax Extra Drill. Um, you know what? No. Let's not time out, actually. Let's Dynamax, let's Foam Burst, and let's Protect. Uh, actually, Iron Headed. I don't know what the best play was here. We are faster with Kingler, though, so that's huge, because it means, yeah, we will get... Eh. What I'm worried about, I guess, is Fake Tears Max Lightning into Kingler, but, like, does my opponent really assess Kingler enough as a threat here? The reason I'm going for the G-Max Kingler is obviously Kingler, but also, too... I think in this position, you're more scared of Excadrill, so you want to divert your attention away to Excadrill, which means I get to do more stuff with Kingler, basically. Ah, but he's going for it. Yeah, well played. <laughs> but he didn't Dynamax. I don't know if the Duraldon KOs us. I don't think it should, to be honest. It's a bulky Whimsicott, too. Wow. Huh? I guess that was a read, but the only thing you're reading there is Togekiss switching in. That was such a risky play. If we just Dynamax, Max, Quake, Duraludon, what do you even do? <laughs> well, that was a, that was certainly a turn. Um, I'll take it. Once again, I feel like these games have been a little weird where I don't think I've been outplaying my opponent. But that play was really bizarre, to be honest. Um, but we're faster with Kingler once again, which is a really big piece of information. Because that means even if you Dynamax the Duraludon here, it's actually fine. Um... So Wim's got my Tailwind, but Kingler and Excadrill will outspeed now after- That's why I wanted a Foam Burst in the first place. Moonblast should KO Kingler. I kind of want to max Knuckle for the attack boost onto Excadrill. Yeah, just max Knuckle and high horsepower, the Duraludon. That should KO. He's going to Dynamax Duraludon. Oh, wait, sorry. Shoot, this thing probably is faster than us. Um... We didn't see the Dynamax turn one, so obviously we can't say if it's faster or not. That was such a risky play by my opponent turn one, though. I mean, your, your Duraldon just faints to a max quick if we go for it, but okay. Uh, What is happening right now? Eject button? Oh, it's just a lagging tail. This has got to be the weirdest game I've- I, I do not understand the last two turns. Like, the Fake Tears was really smart, but then my opponent didn't go for Draco Meteor or Thunderbolt. And Fake Tears, of course, doesn't activate- I, I mean, maybe my opponent was expecting the Tyranitar switch in, but... If I'm switching out there, Excadrill's Dynamaxing and targeting the Duraludon, so I just don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, my opponent doesn't have Dynamax anymore, but I do have Lagging Tail Excadrill right now, and Kingler at minus two special defense. Even though I'm up 4-2, it's still far from over. Especially if there is a fish waiting for me in the back, which could be the case, as... There it is! Fish and Indy D? Fish and Togekiss. Hmm. Well, Dracovish shouldn't knock out Kingler, and... Uh, I don't mean, we don't have Focus Ash and Extra Draw anymore, that's right, but... That's fine, right? I'm just rereading Lagging Tail's description. 
It makes us go last, but it doesn't happen immediately. Right? So there's... Mm, we're at plus one attack, though. You kind of have to fish this Ren Excadrill, which allows us to get a Foam Burst off. I think we just Foam Burst Togekiss and Iron Head it. If we get the minus two speed, we win the game, I'm pretty sure. Because then we have Togekiss in the back. And I'm really glad we brought Togekiss, actually, because uh, that helps out against Dracovish a lot more uh, with Dazzling Gloom. Okay, it's just Vicious Rending, but yeah, Kingler survives that. Uh, maybe Dazzling Gleam KOs us now. But Kingler is faster. Dude, let's go, Kingler! <laughs> the crab never fails to disappoint. Look at that damage, too. Sheesh. Yeah, that's the the game. Uh, there's no way this Dracovish can win now with Togekiss and Tyranitar. Sorry, yeah, Togekiss and Tyranitar in the back, given that Dracovish is minus two speed. Uh, I was like, if Kingler hung on from that Dazzling Gleam, it is officially the greatest crab of all time. But I think it's still the greatest crab of all time. Okay, nice. But Beery Berry? Yeah, that doesn't matter anymore. Oof! Interesting game for sure. Those first two turns were so weird, I felt. Especially the lack of a Tailwind. And the fact that High Horsepower just knocked out Duraludon. <laughs> um, but we take those. We definitely take those. Now a single target Dazzling Gleam, minus two speed. Once again, you can see how we get these speed decreases and take advantage of them. So that's pretty cool. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, it's just Dazzling Gleam. Uh, there's no way Dracovich can 3v1 at this point. Unless we miss High Horsepower. Maybe it's better to Iron Head there because yeah, it just finishes off the little bit of damage. Yeah, like I said. Iron Head is a little more optimal there. But given that we're faster, yeah, Ficious Rent doesn't KO us. Yeah, even a crit probably wouldn't have KO'd there. So we're good. But I think Iron Head just makes it a little safer. The one world that we can lose is if you crit that, we miss High Horsepower. And, but we still have Excadro and Tyranitar on the backside. I think there was literally no way to lose unless we tossed it super hard by like protecting things randomly for no reason, getting Fishes rendered into the other. But in a position like that, when you're so ahead, you just attack everything, basically. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. I don't think I played super well, honestly. I felt like I was in really tricky positions turn one, but just got managed to get out of them better than I should have. Like, yeah, the, the fake tiers... Flash Cannon was obviously interesting. Uh, I don't know, maybe my opponent didn't want to commit Dynamax and was like, oh, if you're non-Gigantamax Kingler, we'll just be able to knock out the Kingler anyway with Flash Cannon and Fake Tears. But that was about the last play I expected. Also didn't cover for extra draw Dynamax and just Max Quaking to Duraludon, which is why I was so surprised by that play. Felt really risky, honestly, but yeah. And then that second game, the fact that Charizard didn't Max Overgrowth was very fortunate for us. Um, and Kingler got so much mileage off these last two games when maybe it shouldn't have, but that's why I like bringing it every time. Even if it doesn't look great, we can make it work somehow. So yeah, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed, please share support by leaving a like. Don't forget, go check out the Ridge Wallet and use code VGC at ridge.com slash VGC for a 10% discount. And uh, if any of you guys actually get the wallet, let me know how it is because I love the wallet. And yeah, that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you next time. All right, peace.